Hi everyone, this video is one of the uh, video series uh, explaining the anatomy of the uh, Beritonium. And in this video, I'm going to talk to you about the uh, omental foramen, or for what we call it, uh, epipleuic uh, foramen, or foramen to the lesser sac. Just let me remind you about uh, what had been uh, mentioned uh, previously in another videos about the parietal and visceral peritoneum and peritoneal cavity. Just a quick reminder that you remember the parietal peritoneum that lines the abdominal wall, and we mentioned that the parietal peritoneum reflected to cover the organs. For example, this is a spleen. And so this is a visceral peritoneum and also a stomach and other organs. So this is the visceral peritoneum. And we mentioned that the space or the cavity between the parietal peritoneum and the visceral peritoneum. So this cavity, you see the P, is the peritoneal cavity. So this is this large cavity is a peritoneal cavity it also located behind the stomach this is the stomach so there is a greater sac this part of the peritoneal cavity is called greater sac and the part of peritoneal cavity that's located behind the stomach this one it's called lesser sac. So we have a greater sac and we have lesser sac behind the stomach. And the, the peritoneal cavity, you know, filled by a, a kind of peritoneal fluid. And the movement of the fluid in the peritoneal cavity is continuous between a greater sac and lesser sac. So there is continuous movement of the uh, peritoneal fluid. There is continuous communication between a greater sac and lesser sac. Most importantly, through this gauge, through this opening. This opening is called omental foramen or epipleuic foramen. And this is what I'm going to talk to you about it in this video. So, let us have a quick uh, review about the lesser omentum, a double layer of peritoneum. The lesser omentum composed from two parts, as we mentioned previously in one of our videos. So this is a membranous part, and this is a ligamentous part. So the lesser omentum connects the lesser curvature of the stomach and the first part of the duodenum to the liver. However, Behind this omentum, behind this peritoneal fold, there is a small sac, small cavity. This cavity known as lesser sac. You remember it? Let me show you again back. This is the cavity I'm talking about. It. This is the lesser sac located behind the stomach. Okay, this is the stomach. And this is the um, lesser omentum. Behind it, there is a small cavity. I think you can see the shadow of it. This cavity, known as lesser sac. What about this cavity? All of this cavity here in the abdomen. This is called a greater sac. Now, the peritoneal fluid moved from greater sac to the lesser sac behind this behind this membrane, right? Behind the stomach, behind the stomach. So, through what? 
the peritoneal fluid moved from greater sac to lesser sac through this foramen here that's known as again omental foramen I think you remember again the lesser omentum with the membranous part and tendinous uh, uh, ligamentous part which is known as hepatodudinal ligament and this is called hepatogastric ligament so both of them the hepatogastric and hepatodudinal both of them known as lesser omentum let us talk a little bit about the boundaries of this foramen omental or epiploic foramen how can we get there okay this is a cross section uh, at the level of the stomach you see the liver should be here the liver removed anyway uh, look to the opening this is the opening of um, epiploic or omental uh, foramen should be here so it's bounded anteriorly do you remember this membrane do you remember this fold of peritoneum that was the hepatodudinal ligament it has important structures known as portal triad including this one which is a bile duct to the right anteriorly and hepatic artery anteriorly but a little bit to the left and posteriorly there is a portal vein so three structures that's why it's called portal triad tri that means three two anterior and one posterior most important to the right is the uh, or extreme right uh, is the uh, bile duct and anteriorly but to the left hepatic artery and posteriorly is the portal vein but all of them let me remind you you remember this part it contains the three structures you can also watch another video um, about the lesser and the greater momentum so this is the boundary of the omental foramen anteriorly the anterior border let us move posteriorly look posteriorly posterior to this foramen or to this cage there is a inferior the inferior vena cava it's a large vein right that's covered by peritoneum look to the layer of peritoneum that covers the anterior surface of the inferior vena cava so yeah so uh, anyway inferior vena cava is considered as um, retro peritoneal structure at mean located behind the peritoneum anyway so the inferior vena cava with the peritoneal um, um, uh, membrane um, considered as uh, the posterior border of the omental foramen okay what about superiorly superiorly you know the collate uh, process of the liver this is the shadow of the liver what about inferiorly inferiorly the epiploic foramen bounded by the first part of the duodenum the first part of the duodenum so this is again just a quick um, a better review I think uh, so again this is the lesser omentum the membrane this is the lesser omentum and behind it there is a lesser sac now here is the entrance to the lesser sac this entrance or foramen again called omental foramen and you remember the boundaries of it and should be here three structures in the located inside the um, hebato duodenal li uh, ligament okay you can see that the omental foramen indeed it's enough to uh, for two fingers you know 
it's enough to uh, uh, enough to insert two fingers in it. So in order to get in this foramen, just follow you know this is the gallbladder, this is the shell of gallbladder. Just follow the gallbladder toward the lesser omentum, right? So you will get there. And in this case, you will see the surgeon um, uh, grasping or compressing the portal triad, three, three structures, you see, there is a shadow green here, which is the bile duct and hepatic artery, and posteriorly, which is not seen, the portal vein. So, uh, uh, the surgeon grasps the, uh, the portal triad by compressing the edge, the free edge of the lesser omentum. This is the lesser omentum, and this is the free edge of lesser omentum. That's known as, again, hepato dodinal again let me show you this is the hepato dodinal ligament so he the the surgeon grasps this part of the lesser momentum and his index finger inserted into the lesser sac right through this foramen that's known omental foramen so it's important to know where is it and to compress the structure in case of surgery or so and avoid cutting them and uh, what I'm gonna say also one of the important um, uh, clinical correlation uh, for the for this foramen for a mental foramen is that sometime part of the intestine can get in and strangulated there it's a kind of internal hernia small intestine part of a small intestine get inside or throw this um, foramen back to the lesser sac behind this behind the stomach and strangulated um, uh, at this uh, foramen so because the edge of this foramen is like has or the edge have many structures so you cannot cut them to remove the herniated intestine so the only way is just to um, uh, uh, decompress the intestine by a needle then return the uh, uh, return them back into the greater sac here which is the correct uh, location of them uh, and that's it for this video thank you so much